Hello, my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and today's video is nothing to do with gas. So today's video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sweeping the chimney. Now, am I allowed to sweep my own chimney? Well, technically, we got a chimney sweep in the other day to come and sweep the chimney for us. I removed the fire for him, got everything ready and he refused to do it. And speaking to my wife, he basically said there was a gas pipe in the chimney opening, so he couldn't do it. There isn't. There's no gas pipe in there whatsoever. And you'll see that when we take it apart. He also said this was inside the chimney opening. And it could set on fire. <laughs> it's nowhere near. <laughs> so, uh, the actual... Oh, the chimney's up here. So I don't know where he got that from, so he refused to do it. But my wife wants to use this fire over Christmas. And we had this installed about two years ago now, and I, want, I built all this. I want to check and see what the state of the chimney is like two years down the line. So I'm going to sweep the chimney myself. So technically you require a chimney sweep to do this. And you require a heat ass engineer to actually install your uh, log burning stove. If you don't use a heat ass engineer, you can actually do it yourself, but you must tell your local building control that you've got one and they will come and inspect it after you've installed it because some log burners will need ventilation and some actually don't depending on what size you go for so I've waffled long enough now so let's get on with taking this fire out and sweeping this chimney let's get on with it then now before we get cracking on this video please could you take some time to subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos Remember, mainly Mondays and Wednesdays, now let's get back to Derek and uh, get on with the video then. Now, just before I start to remove this log burner, a couple of things. First thing is, you're going to require one of these. This is your CO alarm, your carbon monoxide alarm. And it is law in England to have one of these if you've got solid fuel. Gas, no. Solid fuel, yes. But in Scotland, it is law for solid fuel and gas. And another good idea will be to have one of these fire extinguisher. Now, this is a powder fire extinguisher. You don't want a CO2 one when you're dealing with paper and wood. Um, water ones, no. <laughs> the powder ones are the best ones. But again, this has to be checked every year on the back. It tells you where it, when it needs to be checked. And if not, replace it every year. Okay, then they're, they're not very expensive from our German supermarkets. Um, so they're really good. So make sure you've got one of these. This isn't law to have one of these, like it isn't law to have a fire blanket if you've got a chip pan. But they're a bloody good idea. So make sure you've got one of these. And make sure you've got one of these. So now we can get on with removing this log burner. So you can see now I've removed the fire. Now the first thing I want to do is... I, had, I cut this board when I was making the fireplace to protect the hearth. So I'm just going to slide that in. And then up here is the fireboard, which stops anything coming down the chimney when the fire's in place. So I need to remove that. So, first thing I need to do is put my safety specs on. Now, I have removed this before. 
and got rid of all the fire cement, but I still need to get out. So, this has a couple of names. Take my glasses off now, get in the way. But this has a couple of names in the gas industry. We have a call it a register plate or a debris plate, but I think in the solid fuel world they call it a register plate. So it's made of galvanized metal, you can also get it out of stainless steel as well. This has the inspection hatch here, so you can see it's bolted in here, so you can actually take this out and uh, sweep the chimney from here. You can also sweep the chimney from the fire itself you don't need to take it out really but I want to see what it's like inside so this is why I've taken it all out so I've cleaned everything up already cleaned this back up again so you can see it in its glory so uh, this is a register plate and basically what its job is to do is to stop the smoke coming back down the chimney now again these need securing to the wall and then when you do buy them, they come with angle brackets so you can drill into the wall and stuff like that. But my space is too small for the brackets. So I'm fixing mine down from inside because once it's fixed in, not coming out again, ever. So uh, that's the register plate. Stops you dying. So you need one. Now, next thing I'm going to do is bomb the chimney. Well, that doesn't mean I'm going to put a bomb in it. That means I'm going to use a smoke pellet to check the integrity of the chimney. So, let's get on with that then. Now, I'm going to use the smoke bombs I normally use for when I'm testing chimneys from a gas appliances. So, this produces smoke 5 metres cubed over 30 seconds. So, that's what I'm going to use. But first of all, I'm going to test it with a match. I've not warmed the flue up like I would do with a gas appliance. So I've just got my blow lamp, I'm going to light my match, drop it in and just see if I've got a pull first before I try the bomb. Because I don't really want to fill the house with smoke. I don't know whether you can see that, but it is going up. Tell you what, if I light the match you might see it a bit better. Can you see that? Matches the wet. There you go. So we have got some pull on this chimney without warming it up. <coughs> so I'm just going to use my bomb now. Now normally I would have a cup for this. Um, so just put my bomb in and light it. But I've just gone to my till bag. Now the smoking, smoking. <laughs> but I've just been to my till bag and it's missing. Don't trust your trainees, the thieving little monkeys. Anyway, I'm going to light the bomb, hold it about here, and see if we get the draw. Can you see that? So it's going somewhere. See that's what happens when you haven't got your cup, it falls over. Now what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to go outside and check and make sure it's going to come out. I'm going to enlist the help of my wife to do this. While I go outside and check and make sure it's coming out of the right pot. And then I'll go into the loft, I'll go into the bedrooms and make sure that we've got no uh, smoke escaping into those rooms. Like I would do if I was checking a flue for um, a gas appliance. Then we're going to sweep the chimney. 
and then we're going to bomb it again and make sure we haven't damaged anything. So, let's get outside and check and make sure the smoke's coming out of the right pot. Now, there's only me who could decide to do this on a wet and miserable December day. But you can just see the smoke coming out of the pot now. Well, I've got grey smoke against uh, grey clouds, but there you can quite clearly see it now coming out. And you can see it's only coming out of that pot, it's not coming out of anywhere else. Well, it's about the third bomb we put up now because I've looked around the front as well to see if anything was coming out of there. But you can see that looks pretty clear. So hopefully you could see the smoke coming up and the pot at the back. So I've just been in the loft, I've just been in the bedrooms and we've no smoke coming out through there. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get sheeted up, uh, clear all this away, get sheeted up and then we can uh, start rodding. But first of all I just want to show you how dirty it is, <laughs> is that the word? or how coked up it is, the flue system. Now, the way our flue system goes, as you can see, it was at the pot at the back of the house. The chimney goes onto this side because the one in the bedroom then went straight up at the front. So it goes off on an angle on this way. So uh, that's why you're gonna see it on this side. So let's clear this away and let's have a look and see what it's like inside first. Well, let's have a look up the chimney then. So I've put a light up there so we can see. Ooh. So you can see there's a lot of white ash up there, which we need to get rid of. So that's the residue from burning the logs because we don't burn coke or coal. So we need to get rid of all that. Now, <laughs> let me just show you what I've had to buy. So I bought a chimney sweeps brush and uh, it's 16 inches across, okay? Now I bought this as a set, it's about 54 quid, and this is just standard drain rods. So this just fits on a standard drain rod, like that. My wife says I can't get these ones dirty, I've got to use my old drain rods. So yeah, I'll get the old dray rods out of the uh, out of the shed. So that's what we're going to be using, and it's going to go up and uh, hopefully clean everything out. So I'll go and get the other dray rods, and uh, hopefully it fits. But it should do because it's standard dray rods. So that's what I've had to buy because the chimney sweep is down. But there are loads of different sizes you can buy. But I uh, thought this would be the well, it's the biggest one I could get, and uh, hopefully it will fit. So, that's what we're going to be using. So I've got my old uh, drain rods out of the shed. And, uh, yeah, it fits perfectly. So I can get my dirty ones dirtier. I'll leave my other ones nice and clean. Anyway, what I need to do now is, I need to concoct some kind of seal around here so when the debris falls down it doesn't come into the room so you can see by the tree behind me it's Christmas time all the presents are under there it's not a good it's not a good time of the year to be doing this uh, but my wife wants the fire on for Christmas so uh, I've got to do it now luckily enough we don't have a carpet we've got the um, wooden floor so that's not a problem. So if you have got a carpet, make sure you cover it really well. So what I've done is I bought a tarpaulin, which is two foot, should be three foot. I'm going to cut some of it off to seal around here, then I'm going to use the rest to cover everywhere else up. So let's get on with that then. So you can see I've now sheeted up the opening, I've even put it around the Christmas tree and covered the presents. I've cut a little hole in the middle here so that's where I'm going to put the rods through and I've left it open at the bottom so I can actually get the head in using my level then just to weight that down but <laughs> this stuff's amazing. I got this uh, Gorilla Tape 
from the old B&Q and it says it sticks to anything, it does. <laughs> it sticks to itself that much, it's a right pain to actually undo it. But, it's amazing stuff, it's so sticky and it's stuck that to the bricks and you can see there's a draw because it's sucking it in. So, just going to get Henry down now, the vacuum cleaner, just in case anything starts to come out of the chimney and I can vac it up quickly. But the first thing I'm going to do is, I'm just going to put the rods through and get gauge the height and to see and make sure everything's clear so uh, I'm not trying to force the brush through. So that's the first thing I'm going to do and then I'll put the brush through. So let's go and get the vac. So I just tried to push the rods through on their own and I can only get six up and I couldn't push it anymore so I think it's because this isn't centralising the actual uh, the chimney. So I'm going to put that under here. And then come through my hole. Put that back down to wait it. pot now. Because Yeah. Yeah, thought it was it in the chimney pot. As you could hear my lovely wife screaming. So let's go and have a look. <laughs> So it used all 10 rods, so let's check them out. One of the things you've got to remember about these rods is they screw in clockwise. So if you twist your rods anti-clockwise, you will actually undo them. <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> so uh, make sure you get a firm grip when you're un disconnecting them and you're only unscrewing the last one. You're not doing the ones at the top. Just remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Whoever she is. See what the mess is. Mm. Well, it did something. Not as much as I thought there was going to be, but at least it's done something. So let's get this cleaned up and then have a look at the chimney and see exactly what we've got.
well that's got rid of all the loose debris. Now we're going to look up the chimney. You should never look up a chimney <laughs> without your safety specs on, which I can't find. So I need to find my safety glasses, put my dust mask on, and then I can have a look up the chimney. So I've got my light shining up. Let's have a look. So as you can see, it's a lot cleaner than it was. We've got rid of all that white residue. But I think we can still do a little bit better and clean it a little bit better. So let's have a go at cleaning it a little bit more. So, as you could see, it's a lot better in there and a lot cleaner. So, uh, it's made a big difference. Now, all I've got to do now is put the board back. Well, I've got to clean up any debris what's around the edges there now. So I'm going to have to get in there with the vac and give it all a good clean out with the mask and the glasses on. So I've got rid of all the loose stuff on the shelf. And then I can put the fireboard back and then we can get the chimney back in. I can bomb it. I think I'll bomb it before I put the board back in. Make sure everything's still okay. And uh, then we can have the fire for Christmas. Hopefully. Well, <laughs> my word. Let's get it out. That is one very full fever bag. Let's get a new one. So, everybody's got a new set of lungs. So, we can finish. Reading up. Side wrapped up. <laughs> I've got uh, soot in me, in me light and me radio. So last bit of cleaning up now to clean this up, remove the board, get it all cleaned up and then think about putting the fire back. So that's about as clean as I'm going to get it. I've got rid of all that white residue now, got rid of all the black soot. So it looks tons better than it did. And well, I've got nothing falling on top of it now. So, everywhere's cleaned up now. Let's try another bomb. Again, I haven't warmed the flue up. It's taking it all. Now, it passing its integrity test, all I've got to do now is get it all back together. Wish me luck. Well, 
went in well, all I've got to do now is get it in position, get it all centralised and then I can get it sealed. So this is what we're going to be sealing the debris plate with to the builder's opening. This is fire cement. What's it rated to? About a thousand degrees I think. It's, real, it's rated to 1250 degrees centigrade. So this is what we're going to put all the way around the edge. We're also going to go around the flue at the top and we're also going to seal the flue to the fire by using this fire cement. Now when I did it last time I dyed it black. I don't think I'll bother this time. <laughs> so getting it out of the tin. So there's a cover on the top. And what you've got to do is get it all out of the tub. Don't try and dig your hands in it. So you get it all out of the tub. And you try and get it on the lid. Okay, it's all out of the tub. What I'm going to do now is, so you see how it's sticking it to my fingers really easily. I'm now going to fill this just with water and I'm going to keep my hands wet. Now some of you out there will be going, oh, health and safety, you've got to wear gloves. You try and work with this stuff wearing gloves, it isn't going to happen. You might get away with wearing latex gloves, but I'm allergic to latex so I can't wear them. And you might get away with wearing the plastic gloves. But I'm allergic to the powder what goes in the plastic gloves, so that's why I'm not wearing gloves. And you'll find it's a lot easier if you don't. But first of all, I need to go fill this with water. So I've just got some water in there. Again, because I'm working above my head, I need to put my safety specs on. Now, just wet your hand and take a bit of the fire cement. And then you can see now how it's not sticking to my hands. This is incredibly wet this stuff at the moment. It's normally a lot drier than this. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to make it into a sausage and I'm going to put it around the debris plate so it seals it all to the brickwork. Now the secret to getting a good finish on your fire cement, so you roughly put it in like that and you fill your tub with water because you keep your hands wet at all times. So you just wet your fingers and then you can smooth it off. And if you keep your hands wet, it makes the job go easier and it doesn't stick to your hands. And you can manipulate it wherever you want. Give you a nice finish. So if any of you were worried about this big piece of wood that it wasn't protected from the flu from going on fire, not that it ever would, there is a piece of steel around the back of here as well. So you could just, not that you need to make it that neat, but also makes it go off better and it gives it a good finish. So just make sure you keep your hands wet while you're putting it on. And then once you put it on, then you can use your wet hands then to smooth it off. It's as simple as that. So all I gotta do now is get the flue in, get the actual fire in itself. So I need to slide this up the hole first. So put on some kind of an angle. <coughs> this weighs a ton by the way. So bends your knees. <coughs> So 
So that was easy. It's just a matter now of getting it all level and uh, looking in the centre. So I've been a very good husband and I have actually stained the fire cement black for going around here. Because my wife told me I had to. <laughs> so it's just a matter of... off all the excess now and uh, make it look pretty. So we'll catch you in a minute. And as you can see it's all nice and neat and all cleaned up and looks pretty for my wife. And so you can see everything's back together again. Got the baffle in, got the side cheeks in, and everything's ready to rock and roll. And finally, for my own peace of mind, I just basically uh, put another smoke bomb in the bottom of the fire. And, well, it did finally light. As you can see the smoke coming in there. And I just shut the door and just made sure that there was no smoke coming out of the back of the fire. And no smoke was coming back down the chimney. And that is a job complete. And that is the end of this video on sweeping a chimney on a solid fuel stove. So if you've liked this video why don't you give me a thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you've not subscribed to my channel then please subscribe because it helps and don't forget to hit that notification bell because uh, YouTube will tell you when we're releasing videos, which is mainly Mondays and Wednesdays. All I've got left to say is, make sure you've got a fire extinguisher, and make sure you've got a CO alarm if you've got a solid fuel appliance. And thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers guys!